Hello, I'm Abby X, Toy Cat, and welcome back to the Update Adventures. And like many other people who have long-term survival worlds, I have this kind of OP spawn setup. I have infinite food, I have a mega beacon, I even have in my little underwater area uh, a wonderful conduit that's running and giving me this delightful underwater vision and breathing effect. It's really nice, it's really great, but there's a problem in that this area isn't that OP otherwise. It's filled with dirt and sand and stone and cobblestone even. It's very, very ugly because it generated in 2000. 12 and I haven't really done anything with it since but that changes today I tell you if you don't mind I actually want to start this video with a question what do you think the correct tool is to break a block of coral or even just to break coral as a whole let's say because coral itself uh you know I would have guessed it would be either like you know an axe because you know it's kind of like the the seas tree or you might argue it's a hoe because of course I mean it's kind of like a plant but no actually coral can be broken with any tool but if you have a silk touch pool you actually get it right back and then the coral blocks themselves can only be broken with a pickaxe which just feels slightly wrong it feels like you know again this is Minecraft only three updates ago but just a few years ago they had a slightly different attitude towards what block should be broken in what way and so yeah the weirdest thing is that, oh, that, I want to get away from that puffer fish. <laughs> the weirdest thing is that you can only pick up certain blocks in certain ways. Also, weird things, after all of this time, how long has 1.17 been out? After all of that time, I finally found moss blocks at this wandering trader. I got, I got 10 of them. It only cost me five, uh, or two emeralds. Of, it, it only cost me five emeralds is what I'm trying to say. And I'm so, so glad that I did because now I finally have moss blocks. Do you know how much hour, how many hours I play Minecraft every week? I, I, I don't have, I don't have the per week stats, but I have the, on PC alone, it's since 2017, I played 1,371 hours, and so, that's the reason I end up doing weird stuff like mining my way through a coral biome, because I need a lot of coral for the project I'm about to embark upon. So while I mine my coral with my pickaxe, which is a weird and maybe annoying bug to use, I'd also like to mention something else annoying, because even though no one ever really wants these coral plants, or I can think of very few survival players that are hyped for them, I should maybe say instead, you still have to mine them because the crazy thing about coral in Minecraft is it's non-renewable. It will only generate once and then never again. Obviously, your world's infinite, so you can find a huge amount of it. But the biggest problem that this presents is that your coral will only ever go down in number because it can only exist or die. And sometimes, I hope they fix this, but it still happens every now and then, sometimes your coral just dies. And you might think, oh, this wasn't a bug, Toy Cat. You just were very irresponsible. It's not like this was ever not underwater at some point. Even if you place down a sponge trying to kill coral, um, because it's deep underwater, it immediately fixes itself. Actually, did that die right now? It might have. It immediately fixes itself, and it becomes very hard. Also, I just lost two coral forever while trying to prove to you that you do lose coral forever. And so long story short, it's painful. But I want to get a lot of corals of all different colors. And so let's do that uh, right now. Uh, while I talk about what's been going on the last week, because as you all know, look at this, it's a dead coral now. Uh, as you all know, this is let Let's Play. It's not just an opportunity, uh, you know, to uh, show you what's gone on the Minecraft world in the last week, but also I don't have a vlog series or anything else like that. It's an opportunity to say, hey, what's been going on the past week of Toy Cat? And uh, yeah, the long story short is um, it's been a, it, a it's been a good enough week. Uh, the pass on the driving test was, uh, you know, nice enough. I'm now doing the research and working out exactly where I'll do my full driving test. Again, I, I'm literally, I'm going through this, like, box ticking exercise of, like, I would like to be able to legally drive in the UK so that I can legally drive in the United States because that's the only country I intend to drive in. It would be much nice. It would be safer for everyone if they'd let me just do a course in the US. But like, li literally, like I, I would not have a valid driving license for America if I learned to drive in America, because you you have to have the driving license for the country you're in, which makes sense, because otherwise people would go to the easiest country to get a driving license. If you, if you want a fun fact about driving, look how easy it is to learn to drive in India. And then you realize like, okay, every country has its own standard. Like a lot of countries just didn't even have standards, because why would you need to regulate people's ability to drive? I mean, like, uh, th there's loads of dangerous things people do every day that we don't, like, force you, you know, like, watch out what you're doing with, you know, like, oh yeah, um, you, people can go skydiving every day. We don't say, you need to be good at skydiving before you go skydiving. And it sucks, because every single day, uh, it, I think the, the crazy one that's skydiving, actually, is probably base jumping. Uh, people, I'm gonna get to just get rid of, like, uh, some dirt, I guess. I've got enough dirt. I can, I can throw the dirt away. But people die skydiving every day, but we're like, you know what? 
fine, take that risk yourself. But uh, again, there's this like certain level where we decide it's a risk to society. I think it's fascinating. And speaking of risk to society, it's funny I say that because this um, last week, entirely unrelatedly, I've been feeling a lot of like guilt. I don't even know how to like properly put it into words, but it's not a common emotion to guilt, I would say. There aren't many times you get to feel it. But I, I think it's one of the ones I'm like really, really bad with. Like, um, <laughs> for instance, maybe this is what it all stems from. But uh, in, the, in this last week, I was uh, riding a bike and I was riding behind like a van. I, I was trying to stay somewhat close behind the van because there's all the cars behind me and like I was like, you know, what? I'm I'm taking the balance of probabilities of staying safe by keeping on the left. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was trying to stay safe behind this van, not overtake it, uh, be very aware of what I was doing. And so I was so focused on the car in front of me and the car in front of that um, that I, uh, I I rode across the zebra crossing and a guy was, uh, yeah, which is by the way where pedestrians have priority, and the guy went, it's the zebra crossing, you, and then he said. Uh, a very strong explicitive. One that I, I hadn't heard in a long time. And I was like, ah, I'm back in the UK. Because that, the, the, you know, the, the, the C word is just a common fun one to say to strangers here. As opposed to the, oh, you wouldn't ever say that uh, word, which it is uh, maybe elsewhere. And so, yeah, long story short, uh, that, that like, I know, I, I, I felt that, like, all day. It was, it was a very minor thing. That guy forgot about it, like, seconds later. It was just a guy on a bike, you know, going somewhere where pedestrians had right way clearly you know side note breaking a law and showing why i should not be trusted with a vehicle but um yeah basically um <laughs> it was um it was interesting to me because uh it stuck with me for so long afterwards like um whenever like uh you know someone people being mad at me is like the thing i'm just the worst at. i go for a lot of effort to avoid it honestly um because it's it's like really hard one of i, I think i said this before one of the formative moments that led to me like being very hands-off with like fan interaction was like very early on in the YouTube days. I just used to like accept anyone's friend request who would add me. I, you know, I spoke to a lot of interesting people that way. I, I you know, I, I, I made a few friends here and there, uh, like the, a couple of few, whom I actually still know to this day. Um, I, I spoke to like a, someone, like an actual pastor in a church somewhere in rural the United States, and he explained to me um, a lot of weird, uh, you know, things that are going on with that, and I found that endlessly uh, fascinating. Um, and then, yeah, one, one day someone's like, oh yeah, can you, can you do a collab with me? And I was like, ah, no, I'm all good. And then he just repeatedly was like, no, I'm gonna, and then like, threatened me, uh, until I did. Cool. Like, he went back and forth between threatening me, being like, okay, so we're gonna do it this way. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that with a stranger I just met on the internet. And I was like, oh yeah, I've gotta have, like, there's gotta be some filter between strangers on the internet and me. Because of that situation because just even like this guy like this it, he was like a 12 year old kid like he had a high-pitched voice which admittedly doesn't always mean that you're a young child but like combined with the young child attitude like oh, and it made me realize like man this this kid has never been told no in his life he's he's confused by the concept and i i don't want to be the one teaching him the lesson but uh yeah that even then the guilt of like oh yeah this guy this guy was mad at me i could have made this per day's person i could have made this person's day better and instead i didn't what's the deal with that and so yeah, it kind of stuck with me. That was like a bad thing. And so um, I I, I know I uh, it's 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 hard, but uh, like working out the optimal thing in every situation, it's 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 tricky. And so I've been feeling just I don't know guilt about like one thing, but like I find with most big problems, like uh, you know when it seeps into the rest of your life, like when you're depressed. So supposedly you have you have problem like you know it's not just like oh I'm feeling sad about this one thing. It's like I feel sad and unmotivated about uh, unmotivated with everything like people say like yeah i have trouble showering i i never understood that because like to me showering is one of the best things and like even when i'm at my saddest i'm like yeah gonna gonna have a good shower gonna gonna be some good time to think some good time to uh relax whatever else the only part of showering that sucks is getting out honestly i don't see how people don't get that like getting out of the shower is one of the worst experiences in the world and that's why you just stay in the shower you know it's like um food that has a bad aftertaste or like uh oh god same thing with uh, certain drinks just like, just keeping the food and the aftertaste never gets there. Uh, that's that's my easy solution to most problems in life. Um, and yeah, just like my easy solution to showering, just don't get out of the shower and it'll be great the whole time. But yeah, uh, so it's been sipping into a lot of aspects of my life. Like I had really bad computer issues and I was like, ah, probably deserve them. You know, I've, I've done enough bad things. <laughs> it's interesting because usually I'm just like super frustrated. I was just like, well, uh, you know, at least it's calmer or something like that. And it's, it's very weird, because I've never, like, felt that far in a guilt pile. Like, again, I'm not even, like, feeling any particular, like, oh, yeah, I definitely should have done X, Y, Z. I just felt like a general, ugh, things in 
things in life I'm I, I'm not I'm not doing good with right now. And um, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird thing, but it's one of those. I, again, I don't intend to keep this coral, but it just keeps on fluttering my inventory because I insist on mining it. Which is probably why I insist on fluttering my inventory. So I've got myself a fair amount of coral now, a healthy number of every type besides yellow. Uh, we'll mine a few more yellows in the lovely. You know what? We don't need to sleep because oh my god, the skeletons are spawning underwater now. Um, I don't even need to sleep because it's so bright under here that I literally don't need it. So I'll just find some yellow blocks. That's one yellow block. And then that, you should just mine an entire stack of it. See, it's, it, here's, here's the fun question. If you are going to mine a coral reef, but you want the coral reef to be there, should you mine the major clusters of it like this? Or should you mine the uh, the little individual plants? There you go. There's, there's your question of what to do today. My, my answer is just mine whatever's easy. I'm, I'm just here to get some yellow so I can go. Side note, yellow and pink look so good together. These two colors of coral are definitely the best contrasting ones. So I'm going to try and use those to the best of my ability. Speaking of things that happen to the best of my ability, this this wandering trader was invisible during the day, but he's staying visible at night, so... Let's see how well that strategy works out for him <laughs> right now, shall we? And let's head uh, back home. Okay, and here we are again in front of the best house in the world, and we're about to make some changes to the underwater. Because um, one of the things that I made for my uh, map. So basically this Let's Play world has always been solo survival. I, at one point, because it was easy to just leave your world open by accident, I at one point built this giant spawn house with the idea being that like, yeah, if people do come into the world, they'll be trapped because you could make it back at the time that if anyone joined, they couldn't break blocks till you gave them permission, but they could still get away and you know make creepers explode or something. So I fenced them in and I made it so they'd have to go through some trials and tribulations to get out. And one of the parts of that was going down here underwater into what is then a maze. You know, it's it's a whole thing you can dive into at some point if you've seen this map uh, for yourself. But uh, basically, uh, I used cobblestone to make sure the water wouldn't get in. But, uh, you know, given that blocks have changed since then, if I'm going to have a block that's the conduit for some, between the outside world and this, let's make it coral. And that way, if it's coral instead, um, it'll look much prettier, in my opinion. Because on the inside, it'll just look like, huh, I guess there's water up there. But on the outside, it'll look like there's a little coral plant. And that way we can do two things with one stone, I think. Maybe, question mark. So yeah, all of this cobblestone that has water on the other side, we replaced with coral. Because coral obviously needs water on at least one side to function. If it doesn't have that, it doesn't have anything. And that's a big problem. And also we get some cobblestone as a result. Which, as we all know, is the, is the greatest block. I used to build so much of cobblestone just because I had so much of it. And I think that's like... An undervalued, <laughs> underappreciated thing to do. So I guess I'll make this almost entirely from yellow and pink. Because I think they're the pretty colors when it comes to this sort of stuff. So we'll make this from yellow and pink. And then maybe a little bit of blue if we feel it. Also, I think I just... I'm about to lose a torch. Which is going to be a problem. But there are bigger problems in the world. You know, sometimes that's a... Uh, it's a compelling argument as to like why your problem isn't so big, right? It's because, like, well, there are bigger problems elsewhere. But I thought about it a lot, and, like, almost every... If, you, if you're going to have that attitude, which is a very common one, is, like, then doesn't every issue besides the very biggest one at any given point in time not matter? And, like, to some extent, like, totally, yeah, right? I mean, yeah, you might be suffering, but have you, have you heard about that crisis in the Middle East? Which crisis in the Middle East? I'm being deliberately vague so as not to date this video. You know, the one that's happening right now. Yeah, that's right. See, I, I predicted the future and, and the past and the present all with that one uh, clever little statement. But anyway, so um, do you want some good news, internet? I think I'm going to provide you with some good news right now. Because as delightful as this looks, should we just leave the cobblestone on the inside of this? You know, no, I'm going to I'm going to commit to my removing cobblestone, replacing it. Uh, with, with coral uh, method that I'm going for right here. Um, but yeah, did you know this map right here, the one you're watching, uh, Toy Cat's Let's Play World, is officially about to be um, updated on the Marketplace. So Marketplace updates are a real headache to get going on. I started the process about a month and a half ago now. Um, there was a video where I was making a horse farm. That was the episode where I, you know, I, I put a version of the world out there to like edit down to uh, a small enough size to be in the Marketplace. And so um, it's taken that long for the certifiers to look at it. They spent the first three weeks being like, ah, we're working on it, but ooh, 
Uh, I didn't give a list of changes and coordinates because I was just like, well, it's everything that I've done in the last X amount of time. Like, do I need to explain that? The answer is yes, I need to explain that. So long story short, um, the Let's Play World update will be out very, very shortly. And I'm excited for that. What I'm not excited for... Why can't I get through this gap? And I, There we go. What I'm not excited for is uh, the fact that although it will be out this week on Friday, I think, uh, there's a chance that I'm wrong about that. There's a chance something goes not according to plan and we mess that up. Because, you know, it's uh, it's a process that's out of my hand. And um, I uh, it's something... Okay, if, if you don't mind me getting something from my chest. Because I, I like this series that we do here on this channel. Yeah, that's kind of messy. I, I feel like that could have been done so much prettier. And it just kind of wasn't. So what I'll do is I'll make the yellow more clearly on one side. And then I'll kind of blend the pink in on the other side. And then I'll remove this block right here. And then make that pink. And there we go. It's like yin and yang. But it's pink and yellow. You know, actually, that's going to be my entire little thesis. I'm going to have a little pink inside. Yeah, let, let, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, you know, it's yin yang, but with pink and orange, uh, pink and yellow coral. It's going to be beautiful. Just, just you wait. Just you wait. There we go. And now there's a little bit of pink inside. I, I guess this actually should go uh, this way. Now there's a little bit of pink inside the yellow. And there's a little bit of yellow inside the pink. I need to change this as well. You know, there's a lot of flaws in my beautiful uh, design right here. But there we go. Isn't that lovely? It's a trick question. It is lovely. There's no, there's no doubting it. And so now we just have a few other places where like, you know what? This could be made a little bit nicer with a pretend coral plant. But rather than pretending too hard of a coral plant, what if we instead were just like, you know what? Actually, let's just uh, let's just have fun little toy cat letters going on here. So we'll just fill in any little blanks with these. And it'll look like it's a language and it'll look like it's designed to be something. But it's not. It's just random blocks coming in and confusing things. Because if there's anything I like, it's mining, you know, nine-year-old coal blocks. And if there's anything else I like, it is uh, confusing people for no good reason while pretending that it's totally just a ploy to make some beautiful art. So there we go. Same thing there. And we'll just, yeah, we'll just cover these with various different blocks. We'll get some blue going on over there. Oh, then we could have like this half be red, this half be blue. Red versus blue. There we go. Another, another little theming fit that I think will be wonderful. I really would like to light this place up too to stop that happening. But yeah, let's just for now make the stone less visible to make this place look prettier. Um, but yeah, so another thing I'd like to talk about. Oh, there's already lanterns down here. How has that not fixed the lighting problem? Oh, I say there's lanterns down here. I think there's actually lantern down here. What are you doing here, lantern? Um, so yeah, I um, I think uh, something that's really uh, interesting that I, I I think we should address this because I love these let's plays, but um, and a, a lot of people are like, you know, what? I'm confused about the change that happens with them every now and then. Why is it that like, you know, the the intro in this video wasn't the normal vid uh, intro, and the short answer is um, because oh, I did some corner blocks now. That's gonna mess stuff up if I'm not careful. Um, there's a little bit of problem in that, like, I, uh, I upload every single day, except for the last, uh, few, let's just say the last month, I haven't hit every single daily upload. I, I, I felt very embarrassed about that, truth be told, like, it's, it's a point of pride for me that, like, yeah, every day you get a Toy Cat video, um, and it's a point of, like, failure to me that that's not been the case. It's been embarrassing. I felt, uh, some small amount of guilt regarding that. You know, who, who's to say where the guilt originates from or comes from? But I, I feel bad about it. Like, uh, a lot of people do uh, have a slot in their day for my video. And, you know, the least I could do is upload it for you. You know, you you, you help me out when, when you watch it. Why can't I help you out by just uploading the darn thing? And, um, yeah, so uh, there's been so many little tiny things that's going against me. Where we were spending five and a half hours fixing PC issues or not having internet or just... The, the, the host of things that I have to do on a daily basis just to survive because of the new house. It's very, it's frustrating, honestly. Truth be told, it's just frustrating. Um, so now I'm going to make a little coral plant, by the way. I'm very much running out of fire coral. So we'll take my purple coral, because we've got to tie that in here somewhere. And we'll just make a little pretend coral plant. It's going to be wonderful. Um, but yeah, I... Um, I, 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 I think that uh, one of the things I need to realize is that, like, okay, so if we're not doing fully daily uploads, because I was going to make a ton of filler videos so we could fill the gaps, and maybe that's a great idea of the future. People do actually like filler videos a lot, I've learned, 
um, as long as you, like, make them consistent and you know that people... As long as people, like, have an exciting concept to click on, they don't mind if it's a video concept that only took half an hour to pull off or something like that. And so, um, you know, like, uh, while working on these... Uh... So I, I was considering doing that, but then I decided the other way, like, you know, at least for this summer, let's try... Because I've always been envious of YouTubers who are just like, you know, if I don't have a 10 out of 10 idea, I just won't upload. That might mean that you're going months without a video or weeks without a video. But I've been envious of the idea of like, yeah, well, that means they can really focus on those two ideas they have. And I think in reality, I would hate it long term. But I want, I'm, I'm trying that over the next few weeks. I'm putting a lot of time into YouTube, making sure every day I'm making some form of video or working on something. But let's try some really dumb, high effort content. You're going to see this week... Like, the lowest effort, the highest effort, lowest effort thing that I've ever made, assuming that it gets made. And it's going to be like, why would you? And, uh, yeah, I'm going to try a few things. But during that time, it makes me realize that, like, if you upload only five videos in a week or four videos in a week, and one of those is the, the Let's Play, it's especially bad for the engagement on your channel. Like, having bad, you know, like, the Let's Play is a video I upload for me and for the small subsection of you that like it. But it makes me realize that I really, really need to have a more coherent strategy uh, with regards to how this needs to be. And so what I'm trying to say right here with this is um, I want, I, I'm trying to make the Let's Play a bit more engaging, a bit more YouTube algorithmy so that you know people don't click off in the first few seconds because they're like, ugh, I don't have time to watch a Let's Play. What makes you think that I do? Because, you know, I actually do totally feel uh, that thing. When you when you get a long intro at the start of the video, you're like, I can't be bothered with this, and you, you click away. And, um, you know, even though there's a ton of issues that uh, totally can be caused by that, uh, you know, and like in the long run for the YouTuber, it's like my job to adapt and to make things that people uh, would like to watch and would, would not like to click off in the first few seconds. And so one of the things I want to do is work out how to do that better for the Let's Play. I'd love to hear your, your suggestions, your opinions in the comments down below. But for now, it's just like, let's not spend 30 seconds doing an intro if we can avoid it. Let's introduce the topic. Let's have more of those things that I did in project videos. It's going to be harder to do. Um, you know, and some weeks we won't. Some weeks we'll do the old style Let's Play. But I want to have more fun with this series. And um, yeah, given I, I, I've had a, a, a questionable week in some ways, but I'm hoping we reverse that. I had a very good uh, week of reversal while I was in the US after trying very hard. And I guess I've got to try something similar here. But for now, let me know what you think of my little coral project. Do you hate it? If so, good. That's what I want you to think. And do you not hate it? If so, that's that's bad. That's what I don't want you to think. And uh, if you have no strong ways, no strong opinions, one way or the other, then you know what? you got to pick a side. Because as we all know, all, the only correct thing to do is to be very angry about something. Not to know what you're angry about, but just be angry about it anyway. It's the least you can do, uh, is all I'm saying. And so, yeah, would you like to be mad about something? Good news, you're in the right place. We're on the internet, and welcome to it. But thank you very much for uh, joining me today on this lovely, shorter Let's Play episode. Wow, is is it closer to the normal length? I, I Honestly, even when I try my very hardest, I can never get normal length Let's Plays. But um, I, I want to know what you thought, you, you think, you thinking you're feeling, and uh, this Let's Play is like one of the few places where I do genuinely enjoy and solicit feedback. So give me the feedback I am soliciting. And also, uh, check out my ocean draining streams. They're still ongoing. And finally, on Friday, if you go to the marketplace and you type in Toy Cat, I think, Toy Cat, the Let's Play world will in fact be updated to be the most recent version, which is now a month old, but it'll be more recent than the old version. And uh, yeah, thank you for all the ratings. Thank you for all the people who have checked it out. It's been crazy the support to see. And you know what else is crazy? The fact that if you do decide to check out the Let's Play world, you can actually go down this uh, little escape hatch and you can see what me from years ago thought would be an acceptable deterrent to strangers joining my world as like a way for them to actually get into it. Because they do go down these ladders. They do cross this Oh, there was lava here that's now turned into obsidian. That's a big problem. <laughs> um, what, what happens when they do cross this wonderful, treacherous lava pit? So we'll have lava doing all of that, I guess. And then then they have to cross through here and get this. Look at all the little coral. Wow, it's, it's beautiful, is it not? If only there was a torch on the wall. 
Can we place sea pickles down without water? Oh, we can. They just don't do anything. <gasps> Let's have some water here. Let's... Okay. And if you want to see what's happening here, then a great way to do that is to... You know, I can't do that. Okay, you know, this is just ugly design now. Uh, then you can see all of it and more by downloading the Let's Play World. Oh, no. There's there's dead coral in here. I guess because I placed coral around it. Well, you know, this is, this is proving the point from earlier even more. The, in the world, coral just tends to die more and more and more and more. And so you got to use it while you still can. Use all the coral you can, because eventually it will run out. And when it runs out, it will be sick. Oh, even cooler. By the way, one of the great benefits of having a conduit is that uh, when it rains, your conduit takes effect because you're in the you're in the water technically because you're wet. It's it's weird rules that it has. But yeah, you get this wonderful night vision effect during the rain, which is reason enough to build these in pretty much every major water body you have in your world. Which might be a great idea for making your world OP even more, in even more ways in the future. But yeah, thank you for watching. Goodbye.